Okay, I guess we can start now. Good morning, everyone, or good evening. Um, today, we are very glad to have Nooper here as our speaker. Uh, so please allow me to briefly introduce Nooper. Nooper is currently a PhD student at CMU, supervised by Professor Zhu Junyan, and her research is in generative models, specifically efficiently fine-tuning and transfer learning techniques to improve generative models. So very warm welcome, Nooper, and uh, yeah, you can start if you are ready. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I'm Nupur. I'm a first year PhD student at Carnegie Mellon University. And thanks a lot for inviting me for the talk. So today I will talk about our work on customizing large scale text to image diffusion models. And feel free to stop me at any point of time if you have any questions. So large scale models have really become popular nowadays and they show like really incredible capability to model complex scenes and generate unseen compositions based on whatever is the text prompt. These models usually belong to different class of families like diffusion, autoregressive, and recently GANs as well. Today, I will mostly focus on diffusion models. These models are basically trained on huge amounts of data, but it's still a fixed snapshot of the data and not everything like personal concepts are not really seen during training. So these models still lack some capabilities. For example, if I query the stable diffusion model, which is one of the very popular text to image diffusion model with the text prompt photo of a moon gate, this is the text from this is the image that is generated by the model. But if we look at some real moon gate images, it's significantly different from what is generated and probably not the ideal image that we want. We can try again and again, this is not what really what we wanted. So how can we uh, improve this model and embed the knowledge of this real concept moon gate into the model? so that it can generate new images with the moon gate and even combine it with some existing knowledge of concepts like highway to generate moon gate in the middle of a highway and similarly other unseen contexts. Also, a lot of uh, these new concepts are in nature personal. For example, as a user, we want to be able to generate images from our own personal lives, like friends, pets, personal objects and places. And these images are not really seen during training. So how can we uh, embed the knowledge of this personal concept into the model? And as shown here, just describing via text is not really results in the desired output that we want. So we want to be able to augment the model with this new concept. Hello? Sorry about that. So, so for participants, uh, please mute yourself when you join. I will also look out for the participants. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, so basically we want to be able to augment the pre-trained model with these new concepts so that it generalizes and can create new variations of the concept like wearing sunglasses. And even more so, we want to be able to combine multiple new concepts. Like if, if I want our pet dog image in front of this new concept moon gate, the model should be able to do that. So how do we efficiently customize these large scale text to image models? And I will first go briefly over the training pipeline of diffusion model and then discuss in more detail our fine tuning method. So diffusion model basically consists of a forward process where we create more noisy versions of the image as we increase the time step. And this forward process is basically fixed where we are sampling a Gaussian noise and adding that to the image. During the training process, we want to learn the reverse of this diffusion process so that 
give it at any point of time this noisy image xt, we can predict the less noisy version of the image, which is xt minus one. So during training, we uniformly sample time step t, create the noisy version of the image using this equation, where we are sampling a Gaussian noise epsilon. And we input this noisy image along with its corresponding text prompt, like put of a moon gate into the model. And our goal is to be able to predict the noise that was originally added to the image. So the training loss consists of minimizing the mean square error between the original noise and the predicted noise. And once we know this predicted noise, we can use it to obtain the best estimate of the less noisy version of the image, which is xt minus one. So during sampling, we query the diffusion model multiple times to be able to generate an image starting from a Gaussian noise to a clean image. Now, given this training pipeline, we and a new concept of this moon gate, we can simply fine tune the model using the standard laws that I described just now. And let's look at some of the results that we get with this method of fine tuning all model weights. So we see that the model now understands the concept of moon gate and generate new images consisting of this concept. It can even generalize and if we want moon gate in a snowy eyes, it, it can generate these images as well. So everything is good, but fine tuning all model weights is really uh, quite memory and compute intensive. And to store each of each fine tuned model, for example, in the case of stable diffusion, it takes around three to four GB of disk space. And as we scale these new user specific concepts to millions and millions of new images, it becomes infeasible to store each of these fine-tuned models. So it would be really great if we can come up with a more efficient method of fine-tuning, which is both compute, which is not really that memory intensive and compute intensive. So to do that, we take motivation from like existing model fine-tuning literature, where the goal is to analyze the importance of different parameters and only update the most important parameters during the fine tuning step. So basically we calculate the relative change in the weights of the model between the fine tuned model and the pre-trained model. These parameters in case of diffusion model usually belong to three class of families, cross attention block, self attention block, and other convolutional parameters in the diffusion models unit architecture. And if we plot this uh, relative change for each of these three class of parameters, we observe that the relative change is most significant for the parameters in the cross attention block, which suggests that it probably plays the most significant role during the fine tuning process. So let's take a look at what this text to image cross attention block does in the diffusion model. So in each cross attention block, we basically have some image features which are being mapped to a query space using this projection matrix WQ. And each of the text, text feature is mapped to a key space and a value space using the projection matrices WK and WV. And cross attention basically takes a weighted sum of value features where the weight is defined by the similarity of the image feature with the key features. So basically we are modifying each image feature based on how similar it is to different words in our text features space. And during fine tuning, we basically want to modify this mapping of moon gate to be able to generate moon gate like images and not understand it as different moon and gate concept. So since we see that the text space is only used as input 
to WK and WV matrix. We hypothesized that only fine tuning these matrices and freezing everything else in the parameter can suffice during the fine tuning process. So in our method, we freeze all the parameters of the diffusion model and the text transformer and only update these key and value projection matrices in the cross attention blocks. So let's look at the results with this method. And compared to pre-trained model, we can now generate moon gate images with this fine-tuned model. We can generate it in new unseen contexts. But let's have a look at some of the already existing concepts in the model. For example, photo of a moon. And we specifically picked this moon concept because it, in the text space, it is very similar to moon gate concept. And we see that the during the fine tuning process, the model has overfit to moon gate concept. And even for this text prompt, it's generating some images which are very similar to moon gate and not has diverged from what the pre-trained model was generating. So how can we rectify for this? And in our method, we go with the simplest process, like simplest method of adding some regularization images of Moon into our training data set. So our final training data set consists of the target images, which are Moon gate images, and some real images which we retrieved from line 400 million where the caption is very similar to the target image caption. So we collected all the images which have in the clip feature space, text similarity is similar to the target captions. And usually we found that around 50 to 200 images suffice and in all our experiments, we used 200 images as the regularization data set. And with this updated method of adding the regularization images, we see that the model has learned the moon gate concept and still preserves the related concepts of moon. Now let's again go back to some of the personalized concepts. And another uh, thing that we need to decide when it comes to personalized concept is how to describe this specific instance of a general category like dog. We probably don't want to fine tune the model with the text caption photo of a dog as that would change all dog images in the model. So we do something which is basically add a modifier token in front of the category word. So in case of a pet dog, the image, the target concept is described as V star dog. In case of cat, it will be V star cat or V star toy and etc. Et and this V star is basically a new embedding in the text embedding space. And during our fine tuning process, we fine tune this new added embedding along with the key and value projection matrices that we were already fine, -tuned, fine tuning. So we have a method for personalizing on unique concepts, personalized concepts, and I will show some of the results using this method. So we can generate our pet dog wearing headphones, create artistic variations of a personal daughter's plushie that I have, and even add new objects in the scene. So we can now successfully fine tune on individual concepts, but what if I want to combine two new concepts that we have added to the model and I want to generate our pet dog image in front of a moon gate like structure. So a common baseline for that is we basically use our custom diffusion method and simply train on the joint training data set of both dog and moon gate images. And this is the result that we get. It seems to combine these two things and coherently compose them together in the final generated image. 
But this joint training method requires us to retrain every time we want a new composition. And the possible space of compositions increases combinatorially as we increase the number of concepts. And if we can have a more efficient method to probably maybe simply merge the weights of individual concepts, that will be much more feasible. And that is what we try to tackle in uh, our method as well. So given the individual fine-tuned uh, weights of Moongate and Dog, can we just combine these two matrices and be able to generate our pet dog in front of a moon gate like structure. So since we are only fine tuning a, like 3% of the full model parameter space, uh, defining, uh, defining an optimization problem which can merge these two weights is more feasible. So we formulate this as a constrained least square optimization problem where our goal is to find a W which is similar to the pre-trained model W0 on some random regularization set of captions, but which behaves uh, similar to what we have for the fine-tuned model weights on the target set of prompts like photo of V-star dog or photo of a moon gate. So this is basically a least square uh, constrained optimization problem. And in literature, this has been shown to have a closed form solution using the method of Lagrange multiplier. So we use the standard technique. We formulate this as this loss function where this is the minimization objective. This is the constraint and V is our Lagrange multiplier for each constraint. And if we differentiate for above and get that to zero, we can solve for our merged weights W and V to obtain the final merged find like the merged weights for which has the knowledge of both these concepts. I will show some results now for using this method for two concepts. And we see that comparatively compared to joint training in this case also, we can optimize and get our merged weights for the dog in front of a moon gate. And it takes only around a second to get the weights, merged weights once we have individual concepts model trained. And similarly, more samples for combining cat with a personalized wooden part concept, the cat in on a chair in front of a beach for a specific flower which in in the wooden pot and we can also combine a specific style concept with the object to generate paintings in that style this is one of the example of having three concepts where we are generating the painting of the cat sitting on the chair in a specific style given for whose the target images are shown on the right. Uh, I will now discuss, compare our work with some of the concurrent works which existed for this method, Dream Booth, which fine tunes all the model weights, and textual inversion, which fine tunes uh, only a text embedding for each concept. So these are some of the sample comparisons. We see that the, our method in Dreamwood performs somewhat similarly, but textual inversion really struggles to follow the text prompt or sometimes doesn't create the exact training image that we wanted it to generate. This is an example of multiple concepts. And here our method performs marginally better than Dreamwood and much better than textual inversion. The, again, another example of combining the table and chair concept. So to measure the uh, benefit of each method quantitatively, we use two metrics called image alignment and text alignment, which we follow from other works like textual inversion. 
And the goal of image alignment is to measure how well our generated image is similar to the given target image, which is measured as the dot product similarity in the clip feature space. Similarly, for text alignment, we calculate the dot product similarity of the text feature with the generated image feature. And if we plot this, we don't want the fine-tuned model to only have high text alignment, which shows underfitting, and just having high image alignment is also not good. So a better method will probably lie on the upper right corner with both high image and text alignment. And these are the results compared of our method compared to other works. And similarly for multiple concepts, and we see that our and Dream Booth method perform somewhat comparably and much better than textual inversion. But our method is more efficient, both during training and in terms of disk space storage. So we basically need only 75 MB per fine-tuned model. And we can even compress it further if we analyze the difference in the pre-trained and fine-tuned weights. So we, in this diagram, we show the singular values of this difference matrix, and it basically drastically drops down. It shows that the, the difference in the pre-trained and the fine-tuned weights can be approximated as a low-rank matrix. And that's what we did and find that with almost five times storage decrease, the generated image is still almost exactly the same and the quantitative metric metrics also remain the same as the original model. Yeah, I would also like to mention some of the limitations of our method where it really struggles with more complicated concepts like generating a dog and a cat together in a scene and it somehow mixes the attributes of both. But we also find that this issue is also there in the pre-trained model to some extent, and it gets exacerbated in the fine-tuned model. Another similar scenario where we fail to generate these two trials together. So in summary, uh, we proposed a fast and, and efficient method for customizing text-to-image diffusion models. And our method allows for merging these weights to enable multiple concepts in the same scene. But uh, yeah, so I think the custom diffusion part is, uh, that's what I had to discuss for this. I will next discuss our next project on removing concepts. If anyone has any questions, maybe at this point of time, it would be good to ask uh, for this topic. Okay, yeah, let's move on to the next thing that I wanted to talk about, which is uh, we saw how we can add new concepts to the model, but what if we wanted to remove certain concepts from the model? And why would we need to do that is basically the fusion model has been shown to memorize certain training images, which is not desirable in terms of private for privacy reasons. For example, here is a memorized training image, which is generated exactly the same. So we probably want to remove this training image from the model. It sometimes remembers the style of the artist and the artist might not want the model to generate images in their style. And a lot of instances are copyright and the more we might want to remove from stable diffusion or any other diffusion model to not generate these images. For example, there's a lot of discussion around copyright issues and mimicking artist images. So you want a method which can remove these images, but uh, retraining the model from scratch after removing all these images might be infeasible and quite compute and memory intensive. And we might get request as like, the request to remove something from the model is a dynamic process and a user can request it at any point of time. So we want to have a more efficient method which can do the same, but also not change anything else in the model. 
for example, still preserve other cat breeds when we are removing grumpy cat. So one of the baselines for if we want to remove something is to simply maximize the training loss for those particular training images. And this is what we compared our method against. So if we have a photo of a grumpy cat, we maximize the mean square error predicted by the model with the original ground truth noise that was added. But if we look at the results for this baseline, for the grumpy cat image, it seems to be able to remove these images and generates random cat images. But for a nearby concept like British short hair cat, it is changing the concept a lot. And this is probably not what we want from a concept ablation method. So we formulate this uh, problem of concept ablation as something that we have, we are given a target concept, for example, grumpy cat, and the ablation process should remove this grumpy cat and overwrite it with, for example, a random cat image. So given the distri model's distribution for grumpy cat and a target distribution for cat, we optimize the model to modify the grumpy cat distribution to be as similar as possible to the cat distribution. And if we transform this thing into the training objective loss, it simplifies into minimizing the predicted noise given these two different text prompts. So for the same image, given the text prompt grumpy cat and given the text prompt cat, we want the model to predict the same noise as it would have predicted for this photo of a cat prompt. This motivates the fine-tuned model to still predict cat images even when the text prompt is grumpy cat. Well, let's uh, show some results and compare it with our previous baseline of maximizing the loss. And we see that for the grumpy cat, we are now generating random cat images, but for the British short hair cat, we are much better at preserving the details compared to the images generated by the pre-trained model. I will show some more examples for ablating R2D2 and generating a random robot in its place, removing Snoopy and generating a random dog image in its place, removing certain styles from the model for here Van Gogh images. And it kind of generates the same content, but removes some of the distinctive style of Van Gogh. Similarly, Greg Rutkowski style. And in the last, the removal of memorized images that we discussed beforehand. And the ablated model generates more variations instead of generating the same image, which was, which is done by the pre-trained model. Another uh, use case of concept ablation is to remove composition of things. Uh, here we show that we, our method can be used to remove kids with guns concepts and still preserve the individual concept of kid and guns. And this, this is probably not possible by even removing kids with guns images from the data set and training from scratch. So this is a specific use case, which is enabled by the fine tuning method of concept ablation. And the ablated model shows for the kids with guns concepts only generates kids, whereas for the individual concept of kids and guns, the images are similar to what the pre-trained model was generating. These are, uh, I would also like to mention some of the concurrent works which have recently been archived and encourage everyone to look at the, these works also for the same problem of concept ablation. To discuss some of the limitations of our method, we sometimes, our method sometimes fails to remove a very famous paintings which don't even record the name of the painter. For example, here we show that the Starry Night painting 
is doesn't even require the name of Van Gogh in the text prompt to be able to generate this. And therefore we fail to remove this during the concept tabulation process. But once we know that these Starry Night paintings are not removed, we can specifically uh, target to remove the Starry Night paintings and generate random night paintings in, in its stead to remove these, uh, this concept. Another limitation is that we still see some degradation for the nearby concepts. For example, when we remove the Van Gogh paintings, we want the model to still generate the same exact same image as the pre-trained model for Monet paintings. But uh, as shown on the left and right, the pre-trained model versus ablated model has changed some of the distinctive style of Monet. We compared with other, uh, compared to baseline approaches, we perform much better, but there's still a lot of scope to preserve the nearby concepts during the concept ablation process. In summary, I introduced two methods for personalization and concept removal, which provides more freedom to users to use these diffusion models and opt out of them as and when they desire. And in future, I'm interested in looking at it as like a continual process of adding and ablating concepts similar to a software where we add and remove features from the model. I would also like to mention and thank all my collaborators on these projects. And thanks, that's the end of my talk. <laughs>